it's Jennifer from C Lemon. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to make a custom paracord collar for your small, medium, or large sized dog. Paracord is a strong, durable, and quick drying material, which makes it perfect for dog collars, and there are so many fun colors and patterns to choose from. For the medium to large size collar, I'll show you how to make a one inch thick collar using a trilobite paracord technique. And for the smaller pups out there, I'll show you how to make a three fourths inch thick fishtail technique. This is actually my first project using paracord, so I wanted to keep it simple and use one color strand of it. But if you want to try something more advanced or dive even deeper into paracord, I'll put some helpful links in the description below. And you can also find tips that I learned along the way, which will help you. And I will put links to all of the supplies I used down there as well, which will include the buckle and ring and the paracord that I used. Some general tools that you'll need to have ready for either size you choose to make include measuring tape, scissors, masking tape, a lighter, and needle nose pliers. I'm sure you've noticed this video is a long one. It's because I wanted to include all size collars for all of your size dogs. So first I will show you the medium large size and then I'll show you the smaller size. If you want to skip ahead to the smaller sized instructions, I'll include a link in the description below so you can just click on that and it'll skip forward to that and I will put an annotation somewhere up here. Also, I would love to see your pictures of your pups wearing your paracord collars that you made. So be sure to share those with me on my social links and follow me while you're there. And let's get to it. Here's how to make a paracord collar for a medium to large size dog. You'll need a one inch side release buckle. This one is curved and plastic, but you can also use ones that are straight or metal. A one inch D ring and 550 pound paracord. I'll be making this for Kona. She is considered a medium sized dog, but medium or large collars both work for her. This is a non-adjustable collar, so you want the measurement to be accurate, but not too tight. So give your dog some breathing room by putting your fingers within the measurement. You can adjust this to make it as loose as you want. Lay out the measuring tape and whatever measurement your dog's neck was, put the buckle within that measurement to figure out the paracord length. So the total of the neck minus the buckle will be the paracord section of the collar. So for Kona, it's 15 inches. Then times that measurement by two to figure out how many feet of paracord you need to make that section. So for Kona, it's 30 feet. This is an estimate and you will end up with extra paracord at the end, but it is much better to have more than run out. A foot is 12 inches and I'm just counting out 30 feet from my paracord bundle and cutting it off. Then you want to trim off the ends so they aren't loose and you have those little nylon hairs coming out. You don't want that. So trim off the ends so it's a clean cut and use a lighter to slightly melt the ends so the nylon threads don't come apart. On a table, measure out the neck total. For Kona, it's 17.6 inches. Position the buckle so the outside is on top. Unhook it and turn the pieces outward and place them on the outer ends within your dog's total neck measurement. Then tape those buckle pieces onto the table. And be sure to use tape that is easy to remove from a tabletop. Align both ends of the paracord so there's an equal amount on both strands. Find the loop at the very end. Place that loop through the top buckle piece and pull the two strands through it to make a knot. Then move to the bottom buckle piece and place those two ends in that bottom buckle. Pull the two strands back up to the top and pull the left strand through on the left side of the knot. And do the same on the other side, pulling that right strand through on the right side of the knot. So now you should have two middle strands, two left strands, and two right strands. And it should look like this on the bottom buckle piece. Now let's weave the paracord. Starting with the first left strand, place that underneath the middle two strands. Then the last right strand going underneath itself over the two middle strands and under the last strand. Pull the ends to tighten that knot, push it up to the top of the buckle, and then tighten it. You're going to repeat that same knot process along the entire collar, pulling the left strand through the two middle strands, the right underneath itself, over the two middle strands, and under the left. Push that section up to the top and tighten the knot. And here it is one more time, the left under the two middle strands, the right strand underneath itself, pulling all the paracord through, 
going over the two middle strands and underneath the left. Tighten the knot a little, push it up to the top, and tighten it again. And keep repeating that same process. When you get to about an inch, I think that's a good place to add the ring, but you can of course add the ring wherever you want along the collar. You're going to do the same weaving motion, but this time you're just going to have a ring in the middle. Pull the left side through as you normally would, underneath the two middle strands, pull the right side underneath itself, and then through the D-ring. You're still pulling the strand on top of the two middle ones, and then underneath the left one. Push the knot you made up to the top, and tighten it, so the D-ring is on top of those two middle strands. And repeat the same weaving process, left under the two middle, right strand underneath itself, and then through the D-ring, which is on top of the two middle ones, and underneath the left strand. Push that knot up and tighten it. And continue on weaving that D-ring onto the collar in the same process. You want enough strands going over the flat side of the D-ring so you can't really see it anymore. That way it won't be moving around when your dog is wearing the collar. When there is no more room left to weave on the D-ring, you can just continue on with the same knots you were doing before. The left strand underneath the two middle, and the right strand underneath itself, on top of the two middle, and underneath the left. Push it up to the top and tighten the knot. Continue that all the way down the entire collar. And when you're pulling the strands through, make sure you're pulling the entire strand through. I know it's a lot of cord to work with, but it gets a little easier if you kind of bundle it together and then pull the entire thing through. When you get toward the end, pull the knots that you made up. You'll realize that you had a lot more space left over to weave than you realized. This will make the collar more thick and solid. Keep making the knots to the bottom buckle piece until you can't weave any more knots. You can then remove the tape, put the left strand through the buckle, and the right strand through the buckle, so that they're pulled through to the other side. Remove the piece of tape on top and flip the collar over. Grab the needle nose pliers, loosen one of the middle loops, about the third one down, maybe it doesn't have to be exact, and pull the left and right strand through that middle loop. Leave a little bit of those ends and trim off the excess cord. You're then going to seal those ends with the lighter and quickly grab the needle nose pliers and bend them over so that they won't be poking your dog. As an extra step, you can also insert those into a loop below them to hide the ends. And then your paracord collar is ready for your pup to wear. I really like the thickness and detail on this collar and I think Kona likes it too. Here's how you can make a paracord collar for your small size dog. I'll be using a 3 4 inch side release buckle, which is curved and plastic, a 3 4 inch D-ring, and 550 pound paracord. I'll be making this collar for Taz the Pug. First, using the measuring tape, measure your dog's neck without them thinking you're going for a walk. This is a non-adjustable collar, so make it a little loose so that they're comfortable, but not too loose that it slides off. Take note of that final number and within that measurement, place the buckle inside to determine what the paracord length is. So the neck total minus the buckle will be the length of the paracord section on the collar. For Taz, that will be 12 and a half inches. Now take that length, times it by 1.2 to determine the amount of paracord you need to make that section. So for Taz, 12 and a half times 1.2 is 15 feet of paracord that I need. A foot is 12 inches, so I'm just measuring that out and marking off 15 feet from this paracord bundle I have and trimming off the excess. You don't want the ends to be frayed like this. This side seems fine because it came like that originally, but this cutoff side, I need to trim it off for a clean edge and slightly melt the end with a lighter so that the nylon threads are sealed. On a tabletop, lay out your dog's total neck measurement then with the buckle in the position with the outside on top, unhook it, turn them outward, and place them within that total neck measurement. And for Taz, this is 14 and a half inches. And use a removable tape to tape those buckle pieces onto the tabletop. Then double up your paracord so there's an equal amount on both sides. Find the loop at the very end and put that through the bottom buckle piece. And you might need something to push it in. Pull it through so you have the loop just like this. Pull the two ends through, but not all the way. Then you're going to take those two ends and insert them from behind the buckle and pull them from the middle of the loops, but not all the way just yet. 
because then you're going to put the top loop on top of them and then pull the two ends all the way through. And you want to keep pulling until all of the loops are around the buckle piece. Now follow those two strands up to the top buckle piece, center the ends together and then put them through that piece. Pulling through so you have one strand on the right and one strand on the left. Now pull through the left strand on the far left side of the buckle so it creates a loop around it and do the same with the right strand on the far right side. So now the top should look like this and we're ready to make the fishtail braid. Pull the left strand through the middle two strands and then the right strand through the middle two like this. So they kind of crisscross through the middle and then you're going to tighten it up to the top. Then repeat that. So you're going to return the left strand around the left middle one and then the right strand around that one. So then you're just going to tighten it and pull it up. When you get to about an inch of the braid, you can then put on the D-ring. You can of course put this on wherever you want to on the collar. I prefer the end. Braid as you normally would, left to right, but this time you're going through the D-ring. The left side will go underneath that right strand, but this time the right strand will go above that, underneath the left middle strand. Pull those strands all the way through so that you have the D-ring kind of sitting on top the left middle strand. Repeat that same technique, the left strand going through the D-ring, and then the right strand returning just above that and underneath the left middle strand and push the braid up and tighten it as you go. Repeat those steps until the entire flat side of the D-ring is covered. So now the ring is on and you can continue doing the same fishtail braid as you did before on the entire collar. So pulling the left strand through the middle right and the right strand through the middle left underneath that previous strand. Push that knot up to the top and tighten it. And as you go, take a moment to kind of push and pull the knots on the top so that there is no loose areas on the collar. That way you'll have a compact, solid braid. And repeat that fishtail technique all the way to the bottom buckle piece until you have no more room left to braid. So this is the last strand that I'm doing here, pulling the left strand through the middle and then the right strand through the middle. And both strands will be in the middle together on the other side. At this point, you can remove the tape from both ends, flip over the collar to the other side, and trim off the ends, leaving about a half inch. While those are sticking up, you can seal the ends with your lighter. Then quickly take your needle nose pliers and clamp the ends so that they become flat and curved under. To conceal those ends, you can loosen up some of the braid below them, and then use the pliers to stick the ends underneath them. So then the ends are concealed and they won't be scratching your dog's neck. And then your paracord collar is complete and ready for your pup to wear. I think this collar is the perfect thickness for smaller dogs and I think Taz likes it too. Overall, I think Taz and Kona look so cute sporting their new collars. Thanks for sticking around to the end. I know this was a long one, but I hope you found these tutorials helpful. And once you do get familiar with the weaving process, the weaving technique, these actually become a lot easier to make. And the supplies are pretty inexpensive, so you can make a whole collection of them of unique colors for your fur babies. And they also make really great gifts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit that like button and be sure to subscribe to my channel Sea Lemon for more DIY. You can jump into more pet DIYs right here. These links will be in the description below. And don't forget to share your pet pictures with me. I can't wait to see your fur babies wearing these collars. You can also add a hashtag Sea Lemon to your pictures so I can find those. And I will see you guys next time. 